The equation between India and the Maldives, which has been fairly testy over the last couple of months, seems to have hit a new roadblock with the government of President Moise signing a new agreement with China, uh, where China has apparently offered free military aid uh, to Malay. Now, this comes at a time when Chinese spy ships and research vessels, is what they call them, have been docking in Maldivian ports. It also comes at a time when there has been concerns raised by the Maldivian opposition on what exactly the president is doing. The president making it quite clear that China is uh, the country that he sees equations with perhaps most closely. Uh, India, but not in that equation, at least not in the way that it once was. What's more, the Maldives have made it clear that they want Indian personnel off the island, Indian personnel who've been operating aircraft over there, helicopters over there for humanitarian purposes. Uh, all of that, they want Indians off the island, Indian military off the island, at a time when they've signed an agreement for Chinese uh, assistance, military assistance, which Beijing is quite happy to give free of cost. What are the ramifications uh, of this? I'm joined by Ambassador Bhashwati Mukherjee, Captain Alok Bansal, the director of the India Foundation. I'm also joined by Dr. R.K. Radhakrishnan. Uh, he's a journalist who tracks the Maldives very closely. In fact, Dr. Radhakrishnan, when he were on this program a couple of weeks back, there was an impeachment motion which the Maldivian uh, opposition had filed. Um, and there was a sense that uh, President Moza didn't have the numbers to stay in office. Uh, what has changed since then? Yeah, I think a lot has changed since then. The first thing that changed uh, was a couple of those people who had backed the motion had uh, backed out because Moix offered them uh, ministerships or uh, you know good positions in government. So they moved on, number one. Number two, uh, the delay in uh, the elections, which is uh, forced upon by the opposition, which uh, is in India's corner, the MDP and uh, the Democrats. I think that also has contributed to the current stalemate. Because if the elections had gone ahead as on March 17, I think Moy should have had very, very little uh, time. The President Moy should have had very, very little time and space to do any of these maneuvers. Now that the elections have been postponed to April, it gives him, uh, it gives him enough and more time to actually come up with a uh, you know kind of cohesive res response to uh, the Indian offer that you know civilians will replace uh, uh, military personnel on the island. Now, what he has subsequently done is that he has got air ambulance services going, which was earlier provided by the Indian Coast Guard. We do uh, Indians have dorniers and uh, of course helicopters there for airlifting in the case of medical emergencies of civilians in Maldives. Now he has replaced those with his own. Uh, you know, kind of uh, air ambulance services, which is repurposed uh, vehicles, I mean, air, aircraft from uh, the uh, from Maldives itself. So I think that's the first setback. In fact, none of the Indian planes have taken off, barring on technical flights and trying to keep them airworthy. And uh, there has been no request from the side of Maldives to uh, keep them airborne at all. So I'm really wondering if the idea of sending civilians there uh, is actually a good move because uh, they are not being used, they are idling in the uh, hangars or wherever they're supposed to be, and there's uh, huge restrictions apparently on their movement itself. So I think India is being boxed in, and I'm not very sure uh, where the Indian policy in Maldives is going, especially with respect to President Moise. Dr. Radhakrishnan, just another question before I go across to my other panelists. If the elections are coming up in April, and given the fact that the opposition, at least a couple of weeks back, seem to be squarely against uh, President Moise, and, and, and seemingly with the numbers, uh, is it just a matter of time before, you know, the, the elections happen and there could be a change because it's a relatively small parliament, yeah. quite obviously, uh, or, or, or does he seem to be in a politically favorable position from a number standpoint? Uh, thank you for the question, Vishnu. It's a very important question. But unfortunately, what happens is in Maldives, there is no, uh, you know, problem if you uh, cross uh, the floor and go over to the other side. I see. And that is very likely to happen uh, in the case of Maldivian political parties. You can see, uh, you know, uh, MPs in Democrats and, uh, you know, moving over to the MDP or MDP moving over to Democrats. Even MDP moving over uh, to the uh, parties which are, uh, you know, kind of China-centric, whether it is Yamin's party or now Moise's party. And that therein lies the problem. And, uh, you know, for Moise to get the numbers, he just needs to uh, throw a few positions of power to uh, these MPs. And it's a very fledgling democracy. It started only in uh, 2008. Uh, the first uh, elections and ends, hence then presidential elections. And uh, from there on, uh, it has been kind of unstable in the sense that 
uh, the first president was unseated, the second president was uh, an autocrat, and the only stable regime that we have had is the uh, regime of Ibrahim Soli, which we saw from 2018 to uh, 2023. And therein lies the problem. India had five years, exactly what we had in uh, Sri Lanka uh, during uh, the regime of, uh, you know, Ranil. Uh, uh, and I don't think, I mean, even there, we did enough uh, to sure. pull back and keep uh, the, uh, you know, Indian interest going in both these places. Got it. Dr. Radhakrishnan, half a second. Ambassador Mukherjee, what does India do in a position like this? Well, uh, I, would, I would say that, in fact, in a difficult situation, we are doing the best. In the first instance, um, I'm not fully in agreement with the earlier speaker that it is so easy to make the Maldivian opposition cross sides because there is no national consensus on the present determination by the Maldivian head of state to put all Maldives' eggs, national interests in the Chinese basket. The Maldivians, like others, are fully aware of what happens when all eggs are put in the Chinese basket. They get into a Chinese debt trap. Secondly, I do believe we should continue to maintain a civilian presence until we find out what happens in the elections in April, whether they cross over, they don't cross over, etc. Because there is a large body of public opinion in Maldives that we have carefully built up over the years who believe that some believe there should be a balanced approach of Maldives towards India and China. Others believe that India is a much more benevolent power and has done much more to secure Maldives' national interests than the Chinese. And, and finally, uh, I would say that it is rather unfair to say that we have not done enough uh, to uh, guard our interests in Maldives because we have guarded our interests in Maldives in a manner in which we have not antagonized the local Maldivian and we have tried to make them feel that we are bringing them development for development's sake, which is completely different to what the Chinese have done in Africa. So I would actually say that it's a long haul there. We should be patient. We should not remove all our personnel. We should hang on there. If, they don't, if they're not using our assets at the moment, it doesn't mean they won't use it in the future. I have read reports of medical emergencies where two kids died because the Maldivian president had ordered that Indian assets should not be used to bring that child to the hospital. So it's not such a simple story as is being related here. There, it's very complex. And if the president feels that Indian assets should not be used, well, it is how fledgling a democracy it is. I agree with the earlier speaker that it is a democracy. He is here today. He may not be here tomorrow. Okay. And but we are but we are geographically where we are. We are much closer to the Maldives. And we should also seriously separately think of buying an island in the Indian Ocean and making it a permanent military base so that as a large and emerging country, we are not held hostage to these kind of changes of power because we need a permanent presence, in my perspective, in the Indian Ocean to safeguard India's national interest, not Maldives national interest but also our own national issue. Captain Bansal, what is the, uh, the security ramification of having the Chinese uh, operate very close? And, you know, I mean, just in the last couple of days, there's been a Chinese uh, research vessel. We, we see it to be possibly a spy ship uh, dock uh, near Male. Uh, and, uh, you know, I mean, they, there was a, a replacement of crew in, in the Maldives as well. We've seen them operate in the waters of the Bay of Bengal, uh, and southeast of um, Sri Lanka extensively and between Sri Lanka and Maldives as well. It's all documented, easily available on commercially available apps. What does this mean for India? Why is it a concern? See, firstly, if there is a military relationship, close military relationship between China and Maldives, Chinese vessels will keep calling on Maldives. Uh, they'll visit various islands and Maldives, as you know, stretches very far north to south. Now, once they come to Maldives, they'll be in roaming around in the vicinity, which is very close to Indian territory. So this will, uh, they'll be able to build a database of oceanographic as well as bathymetric uh, temperatures, profiles, etc. of the sea, as far as this area is concerned. And secondly, this gives them a place where they can replenish, uh, go for rest and recreation, 
and their ships which are deployed in Indian Ocean can come here. As of now, China only had uh, Djibouti where they had a base and Chinese ships coming, come, coming all the way from mainland China had to, if they had to be based for a long period, they had to go to Djibouti. They are of course building Gwadar. But if they get a base in Maldives as well, or if they have very close relations, then uh, this will enhance their presence in Indian Ocean. And at the moment, uh, Indian Navy has a very, very decisive edge over Chinese Navy as far as Indian Ocean is concerned. Now, that edge gets eroded if Chinese have too many allies in the Indian Ocean region, uh, which Maldives seems to be, because all other countries which have actually allowed Chinese ships to visit them have equally good relations with India. So they are not going to side with China. But now here, what we are seeing from Maldives is that at the moment, the ad, uh, regime there is taking decisively making anti-India statements and uh, cozying up to China. Uh, considering the democracy in Maldives, uh, please understand the difference between the victor and the losing candidate in Maldivian president elections was very, very low. Uh, so there is a substantive support for India and India has the geographical advantage. Uh, we are the largest country close to Maldives. Maldivians generally for their education, health, etc. need to come to India. Indian tourists have also been a big chunk of people visiting Maldives. So if India starts tightening the screws, it will be difficult for Maldives. Of course, what we have provided to them were ships and helicopters which have been a great use to their population in terms of humanitarian crisis. We have used. Now, of course, his statement says that he doesn't want any Indian troops either in uniform or in plain clothes. So obviously, many of these assets that we have given to them, their maintenance will become a question because Maldives at the moment does not have infrastructure or the expertise to maintain either these helicopters or the ships which have been coming from time to time to India and for their first line maintenance we had the crew which was actually maintaining them. Now helicopter in a country like that is a valuable lifeline actually the islands are so far flung with such small populations that in case of any emergency uh, the ships and helicopters are the only so, uh, means by which they can be evacuated to the nearest hospital or to any other place sure. from where they can uh, Ambassador Mukherjee, final word to you. Uh, you know, it's it's now the Maldives. China has um, access to a deep water port in Hambantota and Sri Lanka. They've built their first overseas base in Djibouti. They have an equation with Pakistan, Karachi. There were ma warships of theirs in military exercises. They've been selling submarines to Bangladesh, a, a close partner of India's. They've been selling weaponry to Thailand for a while. It's, it's uh, you know, India's strategic encirclement is, is complete. I mean, it, the fact is that we have been encircled by a Chinese presence. Uh, what is the larger message over here going well beyond the Maldives? I mean, how do we need to look at this, at this threat? Well, we've already addressed the threat in a way, Vishnu, uh, by joining the Quad, uh, and thereby safeguarding our interests as far as the Indo-Pacific is concerned. As far as the South China Sea and the Taiwan Straits are concerned, that should be the primary concern of the United States of America, which is committed to come to Taiwan's aid if China attacks Taiwan. As far as we are concerned, in my perspective, our first priority should be to ensure that we can square off with the Chinese on our land border, where if we are attacked, we will surely be alone, as always, and to take advantage of other friendly countries. For example, we have Mauritius, where we have a a, a good relationship and a good naval presence uh, and we should wait it out in, in Maldives because I am not at all convinced that this hostile situation vis-a-vis -vis, uh, India either has popular support the way we look at it as a, as a thriving democracy or that it will last forever and I have already written and blogged and spoken on the requirement for India to now seriously consider leasing an island on the Indian Ocean to build a permanent base uh, just like Diego Garcia, etc. Because the time has come for us, precisely because of what you said, Vishnu, for us to have a sure. permanent military base in the Indian Ocean. And as far as tourism is concerned, I don't know, but we have already, we are already looking at 
ways to attract Indian tourists away from Maldives to some of our own islands, provided we don't destroy the local infrastructure there. But there are other ways to pressure the Maldives. But I don't think we should do that. We should wait it out. We should not act like a bully. We should make the Maldivians understand that they have a much better deal with India than with China. And that, in my perspective, is the best way to go about this problem. All right. Well, I'd like to thank you all very much for joining us. It is a matter of huge concern now with this agreement with the Chinese. The fact that it's an agreement which has been signed, irrespective of which government comes to power, whether it's pro-India or anti-India, even if it is a pro-India government, it would, have, it would necessarily mean, from our standpoint, um, you know, that, the, that the, the, the new government, if it is pro-India, actually does away with that agreement, which is not easy if it's a legal document, which it is. Uh, but let's see what finally happens in the next couple of months.